Okay, so uh, let's talk about constructing a confidence interval for a proportion. Okay, so our statistic in terms of a, a proportion sample is p hat. Our critical value is z star. And the standard deviation of the statistic, well, standard deviation of uh, population is p times, or sorry, square root of p times 1 minus p over n. Uh, of course, you have to kind of think for a second. Would it make sense to do the population proportion? I mean, we're, the reason why we're doing confidence intervals is to estimate the population proportion. So if I knew it, why would I estimate it? Um, so in the absence of actually having the population proportion, then we end up just using the, the p hat uh, from the sample. Okay. Uh, now, when you put z star times the, the standard deviation, that's what we refer to as margin of error. Okay, um, let me try to address a little bit of theory then. Kind of show you this next slide so you can get a sense as to what is happening here. Uh, I've, I've done a simulation where I've put colored chips in a bag and I just drew them out to calculate what percent of the bag happens to be blue. Okay, and what you're looking at is you're looking at uh, several confidence intervals that were created using the formula that we just saw. And so in, in calculating a 90% confidence level, okay, we're looking at 50 trials here. Uh, so you see these light blue uh, lines and the dark blue lines. Okay, the light blue lines, uh, I'm sorry, one more thing I need to talk about. That line going up, that is the population parameter. That's the actual answer as to what percent of the bag is actually blue. Okay. Um, so when I did this trial 50 times, I got most of the time the population number was inside the confidence interval. Okay, and there were a few times, and that's what the dark blue lines represent, where it wasn't. So again, just kind of build this idea. When we talk about a confidence interval, uh, we are saying if I was to look at every possible sample of that same size. I would expect 90% of the samples to actually have that population number in it. 90% of all samples of that size would be would have the population parameter inside it, and 10% wouldn't. Okay, so again, the 90% is not a. I really, really believe it's more of a measure of numerically. 90% of all the intervals of that size would actually have the the population parameter in it. Okay. So, uh, what about steps for performing a confidence interval? Okay, number one, we want to make a statement about assumptions. Uh, and we'll go through those in a moment. Number two, we want to do the calculation. So we want to use that formula that I showed you earlier. Uh, and then number three, we want to write out a conclusion based on uh, what the numbers showed up and there was that sentence earlier in the in the videos where I talked about um, what kind of statement we can make about this. Okay, so let's start in with assumptions. Uh, we are assuming that there is a, a random data that they went out there and didn't violate data collection procedures um, and that's either something that they will say in the problem or that's something that we can reasonably assume reasonably assume uh, is true. Uh, and then the other assumption we want to double check is accurate. Uh, we we want to check that it's a normal distribution and that can be uh, done by checking sample size. So the proportion of success times the sample size has got to be greater than or equal to 10. It's got to be this piece right here or n times 1 minus p has also got to be greater than or equal to 10. Uh, and then the last assumption that we need to check is uh, that it's not too large, so that the population is at least 10n, or 10 times the sample size. Okay. Now, uh, just a quick reminder, where do we get those last two statements from? Those come from uh, assuming that we're looking at a normal distribution, uh, is why those two things happen to work the way they work. Okay. Uh, so when we get done calculating things and actually coming up with some sort of conclusion about it, 
uh, the memorized phrase that we will associate with all confidence intervals are we are blank percent confident that the true proportion in context so you know whatever the words x and y represent is between and then we'll, we'll actually calculate two different numbers uh, to figure out uh, what the confidence level is. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at uh, a sample problem here. Uh, a May 2000, get the ghost out of there, come on man, try that again. Uh, it's going to come right back. Uh, a May 2000 <laughs> Gallup poll, real real data by the way, uh, found that 38% of a random sample of 1,012 adults said they believe in ghosts. Okay, so they went out and talked to 1,000 people, and 38% said I actually believe in ghosts. Uh, so the question is, what percent of the entire population would we feel confident saying actually believes in ghosts? Okay. So we're going to jump through our hoops and uh, see that we have done all of our steps correctly. So step one, check assumptions. Okay, so we need to make a, a series of statements indicating that we've at least considered those three statements about the assumptions. So number one, that we have an SRS of adults. Uh, we need to physically calculate NP and N times 1 minus P uh, and actually show that it happens to be bigger than 10 which implies that we can uh, use a normal distribution, a normal curve to estimate it. And is it safe to say, so we had 1,012 in our sample, is it safe to say when we look at all the population of the United States, for example, that we have at least 10,000 people in there, that, and that's a safe assumption. So we, we, but we at least acknowledge it, that we thought about it and we wrote a sentence about it. Okay. Uh, step two is we're going to make uh, our calculations. So we're just going to set our formulas up. Uh, so that would be our, uh, let's see, a 90% confidence interval would be uh, Z star of 0.196. Uh, and then we're going to use our sample proportion of 0.38 to figure out standard deviation. Uh, and so we would type that in a calculator. And let me kind of uh, show you that, um, yeah, let me kind of work the calculator and show you how to get these numbers. Okay, so uh, there's, well, I don't want to spoil the surprise here at the end. So uh, I want to know what the square root, so I want a square root of parentheses 0.38 times 0.62 I'm going to close that and then I want to divide by 1,012. All right, let me try that again. I did not type 1,012. All right. And so this particular number would represent the standard deviation. Okay, so then I want to take that number and multiply it by our z star, which is the 1.96. Okay, and then that's the number we're adding and subtracting to 0 0.38. So if I do point 38 plus now my calculator allows me to arrow up and then just copy and paste that down so if I add that in I get 0 0.409 which is really close to the 0 0.41 uh, and then if I take 0 0.38 and I subtract that same number I get uh, 0 0.35 okay so uh, we can figure out the calculation that way. So uh, I'm going to show you how to do this in the calculator. So from our home screen, we want to go to Stat, and then go over to Test. And I'm looking for a, an option called One Proportion Z Test, One Prop Z Interval. Sorry, One Prop Z Interval. Uh, and I see it right there. It's under I'm on a calculator. It's Choice A. Uh, so I'm going to hit Enter and it's going to ask for some information. Um, now there are a thousand uh, in the sample, a thousand twelve, uh, but the way this calculator works it wants the specific number. So when we say 38 percent said uh, of the sample, uh, that how many people did they physically talk to? Um, and so I need to know what 38 percent of a thousand twelve is. 
So I'm actually going to go back to the home screen again. Sorry about that. So 0 0.38 times 1,012. And I'm going to get 384, 385. Okay. Um, apparently, we're missing some decimal action when they said 0.38. They, they rounded that to give us that number. So I'm going to go um, back to stat test. Uh, and then I'm going to go down to the one prop, prop Z interval. And uh, I'm going to, it's between 384 and 385. I'm going to go with 385. Uh, you'll see in a minute why it doesn't really matter um, whether you do 384 or 385. Um, and then type in the, the sample size, which is 1,012. And then this particular problem, it was a 90% confidence interval. So then I'm going to hit calculate. And it uh, tells me that the p hat was 0.38, which is what we knew. Uh, but then it also shows me that the confidence level is between 0.35 and 0.4. Okay, so you can kind of see what, there is sort of a rounding um, to this. It's not 100% exact, but it's the and really that rounds up to 0.36. But we'll that's fine. We'll go with 0.35 um, as far as this is concerned. So you can do it by hand, where you actually type it in the calculator and then add and subtract, or you can use this one prop Z uh, interval menu. Uh, and so the last thing after we do the calculations is to uh, write it out in context. So what this all means is that we are 95% confident that the true proportion of adults who believe in ghosts is between 35% and 41%. Uh, so even though the sample said 38, um, based on the fact that they talked to 1,012 people, the, the real population proportion is somewhere between 35 and 41. Okay. All right, so let's look at a different example. 